Hello, you guys. Welcome to Sundays in the Studio with Sandy. So happy that you're here. Um, hope you've had a fantastic week and the beginning of a new week starting today. So, um, Anita Marin, again, you were the first to comment. So message me a little bit later and let me know what e-packet you would like and I will get that sent to you. I'm just going to write that down so I don't forget. But um, thanks for being the first to be here and the first to comment. And um, again, just message me and let me know what e-packet you'd like from my website. So, oh, so much to share with you guys. It's been a crazy busy week. I hope you, again, have had a great week and um, getting ready for this next week, the last week of April. Can you guys believe that? I mean, before you know it, we're going to be putting <laughs> putting up holiday decorations, right? <laughs> so I don't know about y'all. I'm going to look over at my comments real quick and see who else here. So hi, Juliana. Hi, Bonnie and Paula um, and Karen from Virginia. Hi, Marilyn. Linda Hopper. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Kathy Murphy. Hi, Lorna King and Peg and Judy. Oh, Judy, I, I hope that you're feeling better and doing well. Continued prayers. Hi, Carly. Hello, Denise. Always good to have you on. And Janeth, my um, neighbor that lives down the road <laughs> that I hardly get to see because of, you know, the sign of the times and what's going on. So, hi, Kathy. Appreciate. Hi, Kathy Barnett. So glad you guys are here. Hi, Barb. Um, and Mary, so good to see you guys on. Hi, Helen Russell and Jolene. Hi, Janie, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, I think I'm due for another haircut. <laughs> the um, Before COVID, I used to go, I don't know, maybe every four weeks. And um, hi, Christina. Hi, Renee. Um, and now I'm pushing it, you know, six, eight weeks and it's getting a little unmanageable. So need to take care of that. Um, how about you guys? Have you been to the hair salon? My friend in the UK said she just finally was able to go to see her hairdresser, um, and sit in a pub for the first time. So, um, I know it's been a little trying, um, Hi, Diane. Hi, Carol. <laughs> I know. Why does it always come back to the hair with me? <laughs> so, again, I have so much to share with you guys. So, before I get into all that, let's take care of some giveaways. And then I'm going to share some information with you guys about something very near and dear to my heart, which is my membership group. Um, I had planned to open it in February. And let's just say, you know, 2020 kind of crossed into January and February for me. I don't know about y'all. Um, you love the long, bouncy hair. <laughs> like I tell Tracy Moreau, you know, the bigger the hair, closer to God. So, you know, big hair don't care. <laughs> so, and my hair, well, I won't go into that story, but um, my hair got me a free Sizzix machine once. So, I don't know if I've shared that with you guys, but I won't bore you with that story. Um, finally made it to my beautician in March. Oh, that's good, Peg. Hi, Anna and Lori. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yes, so to enter my giveaways, just like, comment, and share this post. Um, if you are on YouTube, this video will be on YouTube later. You can always watch it here on my channel or you can go to on my page, I should say. Um, and then you can go to my YouTube channel and I have the videos there as well. I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. Eventually, I'll be going live from YouTube. Um, Facebook seems to have, be having some issues lately. And I'm sure more people are online sharing, which is fantastic. I love seeing all these teachers sharing their knowledge and their talent. Um, but I think it has kind of stressed out the system a little bit, don't y'all? So, hi, Lori. I love that name, Slocum. Lori Slocum. Van Leisthout. Is that how you say that? Beautiful name. Hi, Penny. 
I'm keeping mine long. You know, I, I'm loving mine longer. It's just I, I use hot rollers and then, you know, at the end of this live, you guys will see the studio lights. <laughs> we'll make it look a little flat. So, um, hi, Carolyn Roach. So good to see you on. All right, guys. So let me back to where I was. I get on the comments over here and I lose a little track. But um, so something that's very near to my heart, my membership group and have a fantastic group of ladies. It is a paid membership. It opens on Friday. The doors open on Friday. They will only be open for three days. Um, this group I started last year after doing Summerfest with Chris Hoy. For many of you, there were so many that joined us. Um, I did an art journal class, very well received. And before that, I've done art journaling um, classes at seminar, or not, se well, seminars, but also at conventions. So OKC Painting Palooza, which again is in October this year, not May. Um, and at Creative Painting in Vegas. Um, and so they've just been always very well received. And I love working in my art journal. This group is about art and art journaling. And it's a more intentional way to create with me. So we get together and we create three to four times a month. Um, put lots of content into the private Facebook group, free packets, line drawings. Um, let me just run down real quick a couple of the things that we've done in the group so far. So we've had two four-hour Zoom classes. Um, we've had guest artists, Kathy Hansen, Tracy Moreau, uh, Marianne Andresia, Beth Watson of Creatively Beth, Kat Kerr. So each month I've had these artists come, they've done either live or Kat did a, um, a videotaped lesson and given us materials and stuff to be able to create in our journals. Um, Tracy Moreau did a fantastic, I mean, she's so good at everything, but fantastic lesson on lettering. Um, Beth Watson showed us and shared how to use Tombow markers. So this is all part of my membership group. Um, we have had, I mean, countless number of lessons that are all available to you when you join. We've done roses, we've done backgrounds, we've created collage paper. Um, we, I've showed you, I've shown them a variety of different ways to use stencils that aren't the traditional ways to use stencils and using stamps in your artwork, which I'm sharing with you guys today. Super excited about that. Can you tell I'm excited? I'm just <laughs> so, my doors are finally opening on the membership this coming Friday, April 30th. They will be open for three days only. After that, they will close until the fall. They will not open again um, until the fall. So um, excited to share, you know, once people sign up on the 30th, three days, the doors are open. Two days after that, we have our very first live together on our Facebook group. So um, all that information I'll be sharing throughout this week. And then on the 29th, I'll be sharing more information for you guys and the links to be able to go sign up. And then on the 30th, when the doors open, again, um, we'll come on live and share a little bit more information with y'all. So um, <laughs> again, I don't know if y'all can tell I'm super excited about it. It's just, it's one of those things that's been such a blessing in 2020. And again, a more intentional way for me to create and connect with people. So um, hope you'll join me. We have a lot of fun, have a lot of fantastic members, very supportive. Um, very creative, very innovative, and very inspirational. So I'm not looking at the comments because I know I'll get distracted, but I will go through all of the comments and answer any questions, especially as we're getting going. But I'm going to flip my camera so that we can take care of all the giveaways um, from last week, one that I still need somebody to claim, um, and then our giveaways for next time. All right, so I'm just going to flip my camera down to here. Okay, so this is our page. Your birthday, Penny, how exciting. Maybe that can be your birthday present, right? <laughs> Hi, Verdi and Renee. Oh, thank you, Anita. It really is so much fun. So I'm gonna move this to the side. 
And if you've messaged me, I apologize. I've looked through all of my messenger, all of my email. And so the two times ago was Karen Jones. Um, so you won the farmer's market stencil and this um, double stencil from DecoArt. So message me. You can message me um, here on Facebook, or you can send me an email at Sandy McTeer Designs at AOL.com, or you can go to my website and just hit the contact button and um, email me that way. All right. So Karen Jones, you won those. Oh, Lori, you're so sweet. Okay, so I had three giveaways last time. I'm going to start with this one, and it was for, well, I just showed the name. Hello. I was going to do a reveal. <laughs> one of my favorite creators on the planet is Tim Holtz. He's just amazing. Um, and I have three of his stencils, and those go to Lorna King. So again, Lorna, message me. Don't put your address in the comments, all right? I'm a little, um, I don't know. I would rather you message me. Message me your email or your mailing address and I will get those in the mail to you tomorrow. All right. And then next we had brushes. And so for the set of brushes, which y'all that watch Tracy Moreau know on Saturdays, this is her fugly brush. Um, it's a one inch encaustic oval. Just a fantastic brush for so many different things. It has, oh goodness, a number eight uh, number 12, and a liner brush. And that goes to Kathy Barnett. And I have two Kathys that commented, and I happen to know this one in Louisiana. Adore you, my friend. Well, actually, I adore both my Kathy Barnetts that I know. Um, but this one is to my friend in Louisiana, Kathy Barnett. I know that I probably have your address somewhere, but go ahead and just message it or email me, and I will get these in the mail to you. All right. And then finally, I had the two stamps. One of them was for um, these Andy Skinner kind of grunge. I love these. They make great backgrounds, great little additions um, into art pieces. So this stamp for my friends at Stampendous, and then also one of their new slimline um, cling rubber stamps, which has butterflies and flowers. And that goes to... Linda Stevens Johnson. So again, email me your address and I will um, get those in the mail to you. So I'm going to grab, which is right here on my next table, my other giveaways that I have for this time. Again, from my friends, love, love, love my friends at Dynasty Brush. Again, so a set like I gave away last week. Um, the one, the uh, one inch encaustic oval, the number 12, the eight and a liner brush. So one winner for those. And again, all you have to do is comment, like, and share. Oh, you're so welcome, Linda. Congratulations. And then two of the new Slim Cling rubber stamps goes to another winner. Um, this is the Vintage Post love this one. Isn't that pretty? And then this one with the feathers. So again, like, comment, share. I'll do the drawing for those next Sunday on my Facebook Live here on my place, <laughs> on my page, studio in the, uh, Sundays in the studio with Sandy. All right, so let's Look at this page. I love this new stamp. I'm going to zoom in just a little. And I want to share with you guys some things about art journaling. So I'm seeing the messages come in. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. I will definitely um, send you the packet that you want. And again, I know aren't those stencils amazing? I love giveaways. I love being able to share um, and I have such great companies that I've been blessed to be able to work with that are so generous to me. Um, I have to tell you guys, I, and I normally don't share this, but, and I hope she's super excited, but I had somebody, um, pay it forward 
to me in the line at Starbucks and paid for my coffee. And so one of my um, new customer friends, um, I won't say her name, wanted this stencil. And I thought, you know what? She paid it forward. I'm going to pay it forward. Well, there was no one in back of me at the line in Starbucks. So I just sent her the stencil. And I hope she's super excited when she gets it. I love things like that, don't you guys? Okay, art journaling. Why art journal? Why paint on paper? Um, I love art journaling because it is a collection of where I have my works. So let me give you an example. This is the art journal that I, pre I prefer because I like being able to take the pages out. So you can see my rose page is actually out of the book. So I like being able to take that out, create on it, and put it back in. Um, and these Grumbacher journals are amazing. Okay, so I prefer to work in a seven by 10, um, but I also have the five and a half by eight and a half, you know, which is a little bit smaller. So I just, I like to paint big. So I'm working in um, this journal right here. Move that to the side. And then just to share, <laughs> lots of birthday, early birthday wishes for you, Penny, right? <laughs> okay, so let me just share too a couple of other things that I've done with my group, um, again, on Facebook. So, you know, we took it beyond the art journal and we did tags. So there are lessons in the group on how to create these tags. Isn't that butterfly just too cute? Um, this is the page that started it all when I did Chris Hoy's Summerfest, and I, I think I had like 96 people in that journal class. Um, just such a great response. And again, playing with stencils and paint and brushes and techniques um, and kind of breaking some rules and just going with the flow and being creative, um, that's all what I teach in uh, my membership group. All right. It's a way to get together and it's also a way to play. Um, one of the challenges I did recently was I shared how to take a card. So this is a Tracy Wines Apple stamp and my friend Teresa Adams, um, who's also a member of the group, she sent me this card and I kind of dismantled it and created this page. My mom gave me this card that you can see here. And again, I loved it. I, I'm a saver of cards. I don't know about y'all, but I mat, put matte medium on the back, attached it to my journal page, and then just extended the, the artwork. Um, those lessons are on my group as well. So again, different pages. We just had a fantastic four-hour Zoom class yesterday where we created um, this page. And everybody had their own images um, and then we also created, or I created and shared how I laid out this page. But again, these are just such fun works of art that you can have in one area. We did, um, our first Zoom class was our word of the year coming up with, um, you know, some things to be mindful throughout 2021. Mine has been all about intention intentionally creating, intentionally connecting. Um, and my membership group does that for me and hopefully I do that for them. So um, again, just lots of different pages, lots of different ways to create. Um, and I share, try to overshare all of my tips and tricks and everything that I know to inspire and help people create. So Let's move those to the side. So when Stampendous came out with this stamp, oh my gosh, I knew right away I had to get it. Um, and I do have these on my website. There isn't a pattern packet for this today because of course the line drawing is a copyrighted stamped image. Um, but you can get those on my website and um, you can also get them with um, Deb Antonick, my friend at paintingwithdeb.ca has them on her website as well. Now, let's talk about prep. So all I did to my page, I took it out of my book first, and then I painted it with a layer of gesso. So I'm intentionally not looking at the questions right now because if I do, I'm gonna get distracted. <laughs> but I promise I will go back and answer every single question, all right? So the... 
Uh, gesso that I prefer is the Media Line Gesso. I know it's difficult to come by. You can also find the Traditions White Gesso. I believe you can get that on decoart.com, and you can also probably find it there at that link I just popped up for you at marine-baker.com. She's got a ton of deco art products, all right? Um, I like it because it's not grainy, but you can use whatever gesso you have, all right? And in my group, I'm very big on that. You use what you have and what you like. So I base coated that entire page with gesso. I'm gonna move this to the side so I don't get paint on it. Um, and then I'm gonna stamp out my image. And my stamp pad of choice is a stays on. Where'd you get the rose stamp? So Jackie, I, you can find that rose stamp right there on my website. All right, sandymctierdesigns.com. And I have a bundle. So I have um, the four that I ordered, which are these four. I have those in a bundle. So you can save if you order all four of them has a flat rate shipping and the price is reduced than just ordering one. Um, but you can get those on my website and also at paintingwithdeb.ca. All one word, no space in between. So, all right. So I gessoed my page and then I'm gonna use stays on ink. Now the reason I like stays on is it will not bleed. So I can paint over it and it's not gonna bleed, all right? So the first thing you wanna do is ink up your stamp. If you get a brand new one, you wanna stamp it. Ink always sticks better to ink, okay? And I just take it, and you can pounce, but I just rub it. Again, whatever ink pad you use, you just wanna make sure that it's not gonna run. And I know that the stays on is not gonna run. Okay, so, and then you wanna test it. So I just wanna test stamp this, press down, make sure that I've gotten ink everywhere before I go to my page. Okay, nice, solid, crisp image, all right? So I'm gonna put this, hello, let's move that over. And I'm gonna re-ink my stamp. And I like to make my, um, when I use stamps in my artwork, I like to make them not look like stamps. So just think of it like a line drawing. I mean, basically this is a line drawing, right? So I'm gonna turn that over and I'm gonna lay it in place. And I do wanna go right off the edge, lay it down. And there are always ways to fix things. So if I mess something up, if it, a line doesn't come through enough, I can always fix it. And I will share and show you all those tricks. Okay, so look how cool. I went a little high compared to my other one, but I'm just gonna kind of improvise and go with that. So re-ink. And I have um, this, let's see. Right up here, I have just some leaves coming down. So I'm gonna use that portion and watch what I'm gonna do. I'm going to touch my stamp and hold this part up. So see how it's slightly bent? That way I'm only gonna get the portion that I'm touching, just like that. Okay, now let's come back to our rows. And if you don't want a portion showing, um, you can always block it off, either with some sticky notes or tape, just to kind of block off. But I'm gonna come down here and add this big rose right down here. And I'm gonna turn it slightly. There we go. Okay, so see how I'm manipulating the stamp? to get the look of what I want. So, hi Sharon. Thank you so much, Janeth. I appreciate that. Okay, so this time I am gonna use my little sticky notes and I'm going to cover up 
where I don't, and it probably won't stick. These aren't, they just don't seem to be the stickiest sticky notes. <laughs> but I want these leaves to come down here. So I'm going to set those in place. Okay, perfect, love it. It's exactly what I'm going for. Wish this was down a little bit further like on my original, but no big deal, it's quite all right. And so if you get a stamped image that's not solid, you want it to be a little bit more solid, like up in this corner, I can just continue, I'm gonna use the fat end, I can just continue that with an Identa pen because these will not bleed when you paint over them, okay? So, now, because that stamped image has little dots in the background, I needed to improvise. I'm not gonna sit there, you know, with a marker and dot, 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 dot. Um, but what it looked like to me was splatter, right? It looks just like paint splatter. So I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna show you both because um, I want you, I know it's difficult to find the fluid acrylics. Um, so I'm gonna show you also how to paint um, with the Americana, okay? Or just regular acrylics, whatever you choose. So I'm gonna get a little bit of Payne's Gray out. Thank you so much, Linda. Hi, Norma Jean. Hi, Sherri Ann. Um, so again, I'm going to load up a brush. This is just an angle brush I grabbed, half inch angle. It's very wet. And I have Payne's Gray. And I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna splatter, which makes it look exactly like that stamp, right? I mean, hello. Just like that. Now, in my flowers, because, again, I gessoed the page, I can come in while that's wet and it's gonna let me take away some of that paint, all right? Now, let me zoom in a little bit more. Oops, that's a bit too much. Okay, so I have my page all stamped, inked up, ready to go. And I might improvise and do a little something over here because it's kind of together, a little too much. So I know I am gonna take my Identa pen and finish off some of these petals. Finish off a leaf right there. That one didn't transfer that well. Again, you can just draw it with your Identa pen. Um, in fact, I think here I'm just gonna do like some little tendrils. Again, just go with the flow. Now, while that is wet, my um, um, splatter, I'm gonna take some paper towels and I'm just gonna touch it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna soften the look of the splatter and it's going to make it look like that stamped image went on the entire background, right? Looks exactly like it. Quick, easy, fun way to do it. All right. So I'm just gonna clean up that Payne's Gray so I don't get my hand in it. Okay. So Linda, I use I'm trying to see if I threw it on the ground. I did, I'm just gonna grab it right here. My favorite um, is the Grumbacher In and Out Journal. Because, first off, I love that I can take the pages out of the book, create on them and put them back in. But what I love even more, and my membership and those that have taken a journal class with me will attest, I put these pages to the test with product. They hold up to just about all the abuse that I put them through with water and paint and stamping and stenciling and dry brushing. Um, it's just a nice weight paper. Um, again, I have these on my website, both the seven by 10 and um, five and a half by eight and a half. Um, but this is my preferred size. I just like the way, um, I don't know. I just like the space that I have to create 
on those pages. Okay, so let's start. Do you have the information for this project on your website? No, Linda, because this is a stamped image, um, I thought I would just come on and share and show you guys how I created this page. The journals are available on my website. The rose stamp is available on my website. Um, and you can create and play. It doesn't have to be on a journal page. You could create this on a wood piece and stamp it on a wood piece and follow along with the colors um, as you watch the video, okay? But no e-packet this month, I mean this week. I just, I wanted it just to be kind of simple and quick and easy and share and show you guys some cool techniques and tricks that I like to do in my art journal page, on my art journal pages. All right, so let's zoom right up here and let's take care of this rose first. Now I wanna get super close so you can see. So we're gonna take care of some leaves up here and then go on to our rows. I'm gonna use some plantation pine, okay? So plantation pine. Thank you very much, Janeth. I appreciate that for putting the link in the um, on the group. I'm gonna take out some, this is an old bottle. I have a new bottle, couldn't find it, antique green. Um, what I did put on my page this morning was the uh, the words that I used that you can right click on, save, and print it out as a JPEG, okay? Um, and something else I will do for you guys by tomorrow is make a list of the colors that I used to go along with that, all right? So again, plantation pine, antique green, I'm gonna get out a little bit of white. Again, I'm just using titanium white. And then let's go ahead and get our rose colors out. So this might be a little surprising. Burnt Sienna. I'm gonna do this one with Americana. And all right, and then for my uh, rose color. I'm using one of my new favorite colors, Berry Cobbler. All right, because in the media line, this is my favorite color, and they're they're pretty close. I mean, there's some value difference there, but um, that's my favorite in the media line. Since I know it's hard to come by, you can use Berry Cobbler. So. The next thing I'm gonna do is get a number eight flat. Let's just find, it could be, yeah, let's use that one. Nope, that's an angle brush. <laughs> I'm use this six. Okay, so I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna do very watercolory effects with this um, design. I'm not a watercolor artist. All right, it is a medium that I absolutely love, but it eludes me. Um, but we're gonna do some watercolor effects with acrylics. So very light, loose washes of color, and then build up some color. Okay, so I have my um, number six flat, and I'm just gonna pick up some plantation pine. Again, I have water in my brush. And very loosely, I'm going to paint in my leaves. Now, if I go outside the line, you can kind of push that back in. Because the page is gessoed, it's going to allow you to do that. If the page isn't gessoed, that paint will stick right to your page and it's not gonna move. Okay, so again, this is just plantation pine. I'm gonna base coat those in. Not sure if these are leaves, but they're leaves now. And I'm not even gonna worry about that right up there. Probably put some rose color up there. And again, just kind of haphazard, paint in. Think of a stamp like a line drawing. It basically is what it is. And you didn't have to take the time to sit there and transfer all that detail. The stamp did it for you. Okay. 
Okay. So, and I want to do these leaves up here because when I go to put the words on, um, those will be dry. Okay. So, we have those leaves on. Now, let's go ahead and tackle this rose. I am going to use an angle brush. So I have a three eighths angle, okay? And I'm gonna, it's damp, I have some moisture in it. And one way that I love to test how much moisture is in my any brush that I'm using is to run it between my index finger and my middle finger. Because if you have water dripping down your finger, you know you have too much moisture in your brush. So you just kinda wanna run that through your finger and on the toe only, I'm picking up some of that burnt sienna. And then I'm just gonna blend it and work that in. Turn it over, blend it, and work it in. So I'm gonna do that on my palette, but I wanted you to be able to see that close up. So I only have paint on that toe, okay? So let's get a little bit more. And I'm going to float this in at the base of these petals. Just kind of soften that out. So again, burnt sienna, just base that in. Float that in at the base of each of those petals. Now, when you get up in here where the petals are a little bit tighter, you might want to switch the brush to like a quarter inch. Again, this is a 3 8 angle. And then on the bottom, this is the bottom of these petals that are on the front of the rows. You're going to float that color right at the base and right up underneath that flip. Very loosely. It's always easier to go back and float darker color. Harder to take away when you're trying to get a watercolor effect to take away heavy paint. So, are you recording this demo? It would be nice to follow along after I get one of the stamps. Absolutely, Jackie. It is gonna be here and also on my YouTube channel. And you are a member in my group and we actually uh, did this on the group, I believe last week or the week before. I shared it with you guys first. So, um, or actually, actually right after I got the stamp. So it must have been the week before last. Okay, so again, see how that brush is a little too big? I can come in with my, uh, my quarter inch angle. This one, so quarter inch. That's going to um, not get all over the petals. I can be a little bit um, more delicate in getting into those petals with that smaller angle brush. Okay, and again, it's a stamp, but I can manipulate those petals to how I want them to be. So, you know, this inside, again, right up underneath that flip, inside that petal there, the base of that back petal. base of that back pedal. Okay, so see, you're starting to get that idea, right? Just put a little bit at the base of this pedal, just like that. Okay, now what's cool, to his, absolutely, Kathy, I love an identipin. It's so, it's so handy to have in your studio. Um, so you could take this and go a yellow root and do a yellow rose and use that burnt sienna as your base as well and come in with a different um, couple colors of yellow. I'm gonna grab some hand sanitizer because it's one thing that I found that will take the um, stays on ink off my hands. And so I'm gonna just give my hands a little bit of a wipe. <laughs> Get that off. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my 3 8 angle and let's start building up this color on the uh, petals. So a little bit of moisture, 
I'm gonna come in and get some berry wine, berry wine, I said this the other day, berry cobbler. Okay, so again, I have it just on the, the corner, the toe of that angle brush and blend it in. And that moisture is gonna help carry that color just a little bit. You wanna turn it over and work it in on the other side, okay? If it doesn't move for you, you need a little bit more moisture in your brush. So now what I'm gonna do is you're going to float that right over that burnt sienna color. And because I have water in my brush, it's gonna be transparent enough that I can see that color and where it layered right over that. And I see I missed a spot. Now, notice how I'm bringing that brush up. So I laid the color in at the base and then I'm very softly walking that color up. It's called walking that float. And I'm gonna go right to there. Now, here's a little tip. If you have a very straight line, or even if you don't, a mop brush, so this is just a nice little soft mop brush that you can tap to kind of soften where that ends. It's just a great little way to soften the look, definitely getting rid of any lines that you might have because you don't wanna just stop and have a, a line where it goes to white. So I just love the technique. We'll be asking you questions. <laughs> Not a problem at all. And again, you'll have the video to go by. So um, I said I missed something and I did. Right at the base of this petal, I need to add some of that burnt sienna. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna let that set up and dry. Pick up some more berry cobbler. Put it right at the base of this petal. Again, kind of walk that color up. So you want it darker at the base, lighter as it comes up. So the toe stays towards the base of that petal and very little color, little bit of water in your brush. And then again, you can take that mop, kind of soften it out. Okay, but notice I'm not coming back down to my heavy color. Tell us how you did the gesso. I put the gesso on, Diane, with a three-quarter flat, okay? Um, oftentimes, I'll use a palette knife to get texture, but this page just has one layer of uh, gesso on it, and I painted with a wet three-quarter flat brush. All right, so good question. It is such a gorgeous stamp, isn't it, Linda? Okay, so again, more berry cobbler on my brush, and I'm going to come right into this petal, float that color on, and again, bring that right up. I, I have always loved Stampenda stamps, but I think this, this launch, these new stamps that they've come out with, oh, have just super exceeded my expectations. And the ones I've seen coming out in July, even more amazing. And if you guys don't follow them on um, Facebook, that's their Facebook page, Stampendous with an exclamation point. So I hope you'll go over and give them a follow. This week, they have a big launch um, party going on all week on Facebook and also on um, different artists and retailers' pages. I'm one of them, and there's giveaways. So I love a giveaway. Okay, so again, coming down into these petals. And I'm, I'm doing a soft little, let me, I'm kind of floating it on loosely. So like this, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. It's just a soft little pat, little pat. And come right up under there. Water in your brush when you're walking down the petals. I don't have a lot of water in my brush, Norma Jean. I don't want it to be, um, you know, if I were watercoloring, I would have more water in my brush. I'm gonna show you on the camera just so you can see. So 
If you run it through your fingers and you have water that runs down, see like I do right there, that's too much. You just want that brush dressed in water. So this is my tip that I do for myself when I'm painting with an angle brush. I will run it through my fingers almost every single time before I paint with it because I know that it's good to go if I don't have water dripping down my fingers. And if it feels dry, I know I need to get a little bit more water, okay? So a little more berry cobbler, and let's come in right up underneath that, and I'm gonna wipe off my brush, and pick up a little bit of burnt sienna. I should have put a little right at the base of that petal. Okay. Come right down there, wipe off my brush, so I put a little at the top of this petal, at the base of that petal, and I'm just softly walking it in the middle to soften that look out because these petals are curled. So those are the front petals. Come in and do the same thing. Don't worry about the tips. We'll take care of all those tips with some white and a little bit of berry cobbler. So again, a little bit of berry cobbler at the base. This one's very small. I'm just gonna kind of walk that up. Take my mop brush and just kind of soften it. Okay, the berry cobbler is pretty transparent. So let me show you on the back with the water I have in my brush, it, it's pretty transparent. You could make it, you know, with building layers or with more paint and less moisture in your brush, you could make it more opaque. But using the um, Americana versus my favorite, which are the transparent and beautiful media line paints, um, you do want to use some water if you're using acrylics for this technique. Okay, so again, come right in here, lay in some of that berry cobbler. This is where it gets a little tricky, where again, you might wanna switch brushes. Just gonna kinda lay that in. And again, don't worry about those tips. If you get too much, you can always just come back with the heel and take some of that paint off. But hopefully you guys can see that close up enough um, I've used stamps, but I can see that it really add to a piece and save a lot of time. Absolutely, Loreen. I, um, again, I look at it like it's a line drawing that I did not have to transfer. So all the better. Okay, so again, I'm going to lay in that color at the base of these back petals. Very little paint on my brush trying to just get right at the base. I'm gonna wipe off my brush because these petals are smaller. I, just, As you saw, I just laid it in. Then I'm just gonna come in and soften that toward the tip. Okay, to try and keep that tip a little bit on the brighter, lighter, whiter side. All right. Now, for the center one, again, right at the base with that berry cobbler, just to get that nice, rich color in there. Soft little float. And then I'm just gonna slightly walk that paint up. And then a little bit more, let's bring that in here. Okay, oops, I see one I forgot right here. Right at the base of that one. Base of that one. Walk it up. And then just softly tap it where you end. Don't go down to where it's heavy and dark just where you ended that color. 
Okay, now this one's a little bit on the brown side, so you can come back in with a little bit of that pink if you get that. And just, you know, you want almost like a little wash of pink going towards that tip. Soften it out. A little bit more on the back end of this one. All right, so there we have basically how I um, painted that rose in, and I'm gonna come back with, um, I'm gonna use a rigger, so this is a zero rigger brush. Um, it goes to a flat brush, so it's different than a liner. Let me show you that. Um, you can use a liner brush, okay? It's just, it's one I had, I grabbed it, and so I'm going with it. So a little bit of the berry cobbler and a little bit of white. And I'll show you on my brush. I do have water in my brush. And I just mixed it to a little inky consistency. And I'm gonna go right over. Actually, I want a little bit more white. And I'm just going to bring that right on those little flips. Just like that. Brighten those up. Soften it with your fingers or you can use the mop brush. Okay, and then I just wanna, I didn't wanna hit too much in the back, um, but if, you know, like this is a little on the dark side, you can bring some of that color in, but then watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wipe off my brush, and I'm just gonna lightly pull it down, because you don't wanna make it look like it's outlined. And then soften it. Okay, so see how that just, lightens and brightens that edge of that petal and softens it. Now for these bigger petals, if you want to brighten and lighten and soften that color, you'll wanna go back to your angle brush. So a little bit of that color, that mixture, that white and berry cobbler, lightly float it on, wipe off your brush, soften it. So I'm not coming back out here I'm just gonna soften it, take my mop brush, and soften that look. Okay, so see how that just lightened up and brightened up that tip? Okay, and then the unexpected thing um, on this is a little bit of citron green. So such a pretty green color. And it is going to, um, it's just gonna, you know, kind of those leaves and the um, the reflection and just being next to that color. I see a leaf right here that I forgot. Um, I just, I love how it's gonna make these look. And then also we're gonna come and put some of that berry cobbler on our leaves. So just kind of cross um, using that color on our elements. Now, I do wanna come in, I just have, this is the number six. You can use the angle brush when you do this. A little bit of burnt sienna at the base of the bud. Let me come down so you can see that, hello. So a little bit of that burnt sienna. Wipe off the brush, a little bit of berry cobbler. Okay, I'm just gonna soften that with the other corner. And then again, that mixture of berry cobbler and white, you can just bring down that front and soften it, okay? Very quick and simple and easy, and it's the same colors as your rose, so it's all gonna go, all right? I do wanna brighten up just a couple of these
again, and then I'll wipe it off and just softly bring that color down just a touch. Okay. Let's do a little bit brighter. And if you don't like the black lines, you can cover up all the black lines. I didn't care that the black line lines showed. All right. So this is with the Americana. This one I used the fluid acrylics. So again, two beautiful roses, a little bit more transparent, a little bit heavier color. And again, you just can kind of play around with those, um, those washes and build up the color as you want. Okay, a little bit more white on those. All right, so then I'm gonna come with um, that flat brush. So this is just a number six. Pick up some water. Hello, Carol Craig, so good to see you here, my friend. And then I'm gonna pick up the tiniest touch of citron green. Now, see how it's very, very little paint. I have water in my brush, paint that's very, very little, just a little. It's easier to add it than it is to take this away. So what I wanna do with this citron green is kind of where it starts to lead, leave where it's pink to the white, where we walked that color up, I'm going to float in, lay in just some of that citron green. I have a little bit of fuzz right there. Okay, not on every petal. Definitely on these and not everywhere. See how I just kind of laid that in a little here, a little there, a little there. And I have very little paint, it's watery. So it's just going to highlight and give those petals a really pretty glow of color. Just like that, okay? Love, love, love that look. Okay. So, same thing with this one. We'll go right to the um, to the base with our burnt sienna, and again, angle brush. And we're going to base in the bottom of the petals. So this is the bottom of that petal. Bottom of this petal. Okay, and again, just a very light, loose float of color. At the base of each of those petals. And again, if it starts to get too small, you can always switch to that smaller angle brush. Again, quarter inch angle. And I'm using burnt sienna. Oops, too much water there. See how that started to flow away. And then in here, you're just gonna pat that in best you can. It's a little tight. <laughs> I had a brush stick to my arm, it wouldn't let go. Okay, now this petal is, is flapping over. So I do want to put some of that burnt sienna at the base. Again, see how that, I'm gonna hold that up so you can see that's too much water. So I just wiped off my brush and I'll take that paint, soften it out, pick up a little bit more. and lay that in. Okay, now I can see where um, I was a little wimpy. 
in my floating. So right in here, see, I'm, I love how dark and rich, and even especially right here, how that pushes this petal to look like it's flowing over, right? So in here, I call that wimpy floating. It just isn't gonna cut it. So a little bit more color. Right in here. And again, I'm all for layering and going back and adding more than to try and take away a whole bunch of heavy color. So don't be you know, hard on yourself. If you've gotta go back in and add an, an additional float of color, especially at the end, pat yourselves on the back because you were restrained. Um, again, layer it, add more as needed. Okay, so have our burnt sienna on. I'm gonna rinse out my brush, pick up some berry cobbler. Again, just on the toe of the brush. Hi, Debbie Cotton, thank you. So just on the toe of the brush, remember you wanna blend that on your palette. And I like to pat it a couple times and then flip my brush over. If I'm like double loading, you tend to have that paint migrate a little bit further than you want it. So just pat it, turn it over, and pat it, okay? And I'm doing that on my palette. I'm just showing you on my hand so that I don't have to lift my, um, my mat that has my paint on it. So now again, come right here at the base, float that color in, walk that color up, towards that tip. Take your mop, and just kind of soften. And you can get, this is, um, this is a Dynasty half inch, 400. Um, and you can get these Marine Baker, but also the brush guys, okay, um, for your uh, brushes. And also, because I'd love to give you guys all the information, you can also find um, Dynasty Brushes on jellybean.net. So make sure to check that out as well. Okay, so laid in that berry cobbler and just look how pretty that color is. And I wanna get it close so that you can see that berry cobbler and the burnt sienna and then just the little hints and touches of that citron green. Love. Hi, Jeannie. Good to see you here. Good afternoon. The rose stencil. So Norma Jean, this is a rose stamp and it is on my website, okay? Stampendous came out with some new slim line stamps. So quick and easy line drawing right onto your page. Love it, all right. So again, I'm gonna come in here and you'll notice I'm not really, I didn't start down here. I kind of just start where my brush goes. I'm gonna walk that color up. If you feel like you have too much, like I did there, I just wiped it across a paper towel. It took some of that moisture and paint off so I can soften it towards the tip to get that pale pink color. So darker at the base, lighter at the top. And I don't feel like I need to do the mop there. I think it just kind of blended itself nicely. So again, I'll go back and look through the comments, answer any questions um, later today. Okay, I'm gonna turn my page so I can get in here and try not to get my page into my paint. Also keep my hand out of the way. And again, laying that berry cobbler at the base of the petal. Lightly walking it up. Okay, I'm gonna take the mop brush and just kind of soften that right on the edge. A mop brush too will take away brush strokes. So I'm softening that color as it transitions and ombres from dark to light, never coming down into my dark, only where it started to fade out. 
into just a very light skim of color. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my quarter inch angle. Okay, now if you have a rose pattern, you can paint this exactly the same way. The, the technique and the way I'm showing, you can paint that on any rose pattern you might have. Okay, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of burnt sienna because I want to add right there a little bit of shading. At the base of that petal and then just kind of slowly walk it up. Go right to that one, slowly walk it up, and then just lightly tap, very, very light. If you put a lot of pressure, you're gonna lift that paint. In fact, after you move, uh, lift, like look at a mop brush after you've used it, if there's a whole bunch of color on it, or if it's wet, you know you've pushed too hard. So just feather light, tap, 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 tap. You sold me on the stamps. <laughs> you know, I cannot tell you, Linda, how many people used to say that using stamps was cheating. Same with stencils. My, This is my belief. This is my philosophy. It's a line drawing. If somebody gives me a line drawing and I have to transfer all those lines, Stampendous is giving you a line drawing and you get to paint it however you want. Um, and... Again, on Deb Antonick's site, she has some free download um, sheets. And she has a, uh, oh, it's one of those table, or uh, what is it? It's a lamp for the top of a wine glass. Super cute using this stamp. Um, and so I hope you guys later <laughs> will go by and check out her website. And she she works and does a lot of work with Stampendous and um, does these free sheets that you can download and she shows and shares exactly how she paints them. Okay, so again, quarter inch angle, just getting right down into that. Base of those petals. Just like that. Oh, I love how soft and pretty that is. Okay, now this one doesn't have any, you know, petals like here that kind of flip back. So I am gonna use my angle brush, a little berry wine. <laughs> how many times am I gonna say that? I'm gonna turn the bottle around so I can look at it. It used to be one of my favorite colors in folk art, but um, berry cobbler, <laughs> berry cobbler. Um, and a little bit of white on the toe of my quarter inch angle. And I'm gonna float a little bit of that right at the tip of these that are hanging down, a little bit closer to me. It's very loose, inky. And then I'm gonna take my angle brush, my um, mop brush, goodness gracious, Sandy and just soften that out. Isn't that funny? You know what you're supposed to say and it just comes out totally different. Okay, I wanna brighten that up just a little bit. Again, just light little float of color. I'm gonna be lazy and not pick up my mop brush and just use my finger. Just a little bit on these, not much. Again, I love taking it and making it look like it didn't come from a stamp. The black lines don't bother me. If they bother you, you can always go right over them like I did there when you paint that petal, okay? And you can take those black lines away just like you would with um, a line drawing. Let me tell you another really good tip. So you know how we started with our stamp. If you wanna take this down a couple of notches, 
so that you don't see any of your black lines when you're done. You can do a couple of washes or a good wash of very inky gesso. And that's just going to tone that down so that you see the lines, but you, you don't see them. They're not as hard to cover up with your paint. Okay. <laughs> but cobbler is yummy too, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much, Marjean. I appreciate that. Um, and thankfully, we are not having any technical issues like Facebook gave me on Friday. That was interesting. Okay, so I'm not going to do this rose. I did those two for you. And then I'm going to come back to uh, my leaves and show you how I'm going to decoupage that, um, those words on. All right. Um, and if we have time, I will. But again, you saw exactly how I painted those roses. So I'm going to pick up, I did plantation pine for those that are just joining us. Plantation pine, wet brush, and I just painted in the leaves very loosely. And remember, I told you I wasn't going to do anything up here, but I think I am. I think I am going to make it look like there's a rose that goes off that page. Oh yeah, that's exactly what it needed. Okay, so let me zoom in on these leaves so that you can see I'm a little bit closer. All right, so plantation pine. Then I'm gonna take my quarter inch angle, pick up some antique green Again, I have moisture in my brush. I'm gonna turn my page and come down so that you can see everything. And right at the base, I'm going to float that color, walk it towards the tip, just like that. Okay, so plantation pine, a wash of it on the whole leaf, some antique green on the toe of that angle brush, I'm going to loosely float it in almost like a little U and I'm patting the brush. So I'm not painting a U, I'm patting in the shape of a U. And that's important because sometimes when you paint the stroke, you see a very defined. Whereas when you're patting it, you're almost blending it automatically. Now, I do want to come in where this leaf flips and I wanna bring some of that right on that side and right at the bottom of that leaf, okay? I'm also gonna take this color right along the stem. I'm gonna pick up a little plantation pine with that on my brush. Just make that a little bit um, more opaque. Okay, antique green base of my leaf, walk it towards the tip. Now, do you see what I did a little differently there than here was this is the top of my leaf. I didn't wanna bring that color all the way around like I did here because I wanted to leave this side a little bit lighter. So bringing that in at the base, slightly turning my brush so that I'm really floating that color along the bottom half of that leaf, okay? I just find it easier to do it that way. A Little more antique green, I already did that one. Again, this leaf is similar to this, so I'll start right there at the base of that leaf. And then again, a little bit on the side of the flip side of the flip and then soften it out if you need to okay but how fun and easy and quick are those now again i don't mind if i go outside the line i'm on my journal page if i want to come in and fix that up a little bit of gesso i can go right over it and it'll go away okay so again i'm going to come here antique green and anything that goes off the edge of the page, I like for it to be a little bit darker where it starts from off the page, if that makes sense, okay? So there we have our leaves. 
quick and easy. I'm gonna zoom out just a little so we can get the rest of this top. Okay. So again, if you have any questions, pop them in. I'm gonna take a sip of water. Thank you, Linda. <clears throat> I love painting and painting is supposed to be fun. I think sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves. It has to be perfect. Um, and again, go back to why I love creating in an art journal um, and why I love teaching people how to create in an art journal is because you allow yourself, you give yourself permission to just play and learn and grow. And again, I think that's what being an artist and painting is all about. So, um, you know, even if it isn't your business, I think we still all want to get better and learn. And I am constantly always learning new stuff. I think if we ever get to the point, you ever get to the point where you feel like you know it all, it's a good time to wash the brushes and put them up because there's so much to learn from so many people. Okay, so again, antique green at the base of those leaves very lightly tapping them in. I'll show you how to strengthen some of that shadow, um, like where it meets the rose. Probably won't be dark enough right now. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of plantation pine, a little bit of antique green, slide it up that stem. Now our little bud, a little tricky, but easy. So we put the plantation pine on it. I have antique green and just at the base of it, I'm going to float some of that color on. And just kind of tap it around, just like that. And again, that plantation pine, antique green, right along that stem. Okay, let's come down to this one. Absolutely, Letitia, gesso is a great remover um, and a great thing to have in your studio. Again, like toning things down, pushing things back. Um, I see that I left a leaf up here undone. Um, I don't think it was till about, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago that I used gesso regularly and I can't, I can't get enough of it. I mean, I use it all the time. So base of your leaf, antique green, slight little pats of color, walking that up, not coming back down to where it's heavy in color, walking that towards the tip, okay? There we have that. Oh, so pretty. All right, I'm gonna back out just a little bit because I do wanna come in. I wanna add some shadows and stuff, so I am gonna go ahead um, we're doing pretty good on time. I'm gonna go ahead and base these in. And I'm just using the angle brush. Before I use the chisel edge of my number eight, um, but I'm a firm believer, use whatever brush works best, okay? Go ahead and get that in there. So I have plantation pine. I'm just gonna lightly brush that on those leaves. It's like a little wash of color. And if you don't have antique green, you can come back with just your plantation pine, use a little bit heavier color, and use that as your shading color. Um, I'll show you on one of the leaves so that you can see the difference when we get to painting those in. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna leave this rose completely undone since you saw how I painted the other two. Unless we're doing great on time and then I'll just keep plugging along. Too much, touch it with your finger. <laughs> See how that just lightened that up? So if you get too much paint, touch it with your finger and pick it up. You just wanna make sure you dry your finger off before you touch your page. Okay, let's just go ahead and get these in. 
Again, I went a little bit higher on this stamp than I did on my original, but I'll show you how to kind of fill that in and improvise. Okay. Me too, Carol. Like I said, a watercolor is not my medium. I love taking watercolor lessons. Um, and I say that I've only taken three. Um, it, it's just not my medium of choice, but I just think it's absolutely stunning, gorgeous, such a pretty medium. Um, I, I tend to be a little bit heavier handed, but this past year I have found myself painting more um, watercolor-ish. <laughs> light and going dark because typically I will paint some like my leaves I'll paint them dark and then add light on top um, and I kind of just I don't know switched it up I think playing in my art journal too has allowed me to um, try different things oh that's the bud right there try different things and um, you know, sit there and teach yourself something like this, um, again, on any other pattern you might have, and just play around with the, the technique, the looseness, so it's not so exact and precise. Of course, making sure you're breathing when you're doing it, instead of holding your breath, which we tend to do a lot of times, and the most important, is enjoying it. it. It just is something that brings me so much joy. I am in my happy place when I'm painting in my studio. And even more so when I can travel and paint with people. So this online platform has definitely been a blessing this past year. Okay, I'm starting to get a little heavy, so I have to add some water. In fact, I just celebrated my five-year anniversary of travel teaching, um, and I was fortunate to have these ladies in Alabama beg me for a couple of years, you know, please come teach, please come teach, and I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and so I reached out to some, um, I'll call them big brushes in the industry, Peggy Harris, Margot Clark, Kim Hogue, and said, can you please help? I don't know what to do. And they were very gracious and generous with their information. And it really helped and, you know, prepare me for travel teaching. And up until last year, I was booked every single year traveling. Um, and again, the greatest blessing from that is just meeting and being with other people that love what I love. And that's creating. Um, and again, that's one thing that I love about my membership group is that we get together three to four times a month and just create and have fun. Okay, so I'm, I'm back to the antique green. I'm going to float in that color on these leaves. And remember, I'm gonna show you one with um, plantation pine so that you can see the difference. I wanna get a lighter one. So it's just at the base of these, kind of slightly walk it up. Well, thank you, Kathy. I loved coming to Louisiana and um, again was very, um, honored to be able to be invited back and uh, paint with you guys a second time. Okay, so look at this one. See how light that is? So if it's on that watercolory light side, I can come in with plantation pine. I have a little bit more paint on my brush. And that can be my color that I come in and shade with. See? because the, the base layer of it was so thin, um, that little wash that the plantation pine is gonna give you exactly what you need. I just love the yellow tone in this antique green. Um, 
and it has a it has a touch of it's very earthy. Let me just say that. To me, it has a tone um, of some brownie brown yellow in it, um, and I love the way that looks over the plantation pine. Brownie yellow. That's a real technical term, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so again, base of the leaves. I'm probably gonna miss a couple. That's all right. I think you get the gist of how I'm putting that paint on. Very loose. With antique green on my quarter inch angle. These, I'm gonna stay along that round part and the base of that leaf along the bottom. Keep that top part a little bit um, lighter. And then here I do want to come in, add a little bit on that flip, a little bit underneath. Okay. The community of giving decorative painters has been a godsend for so many of us through this pandemic. I can't thank you guys enough for helping me stay sane. Bev, feelings mutual. And um, it has definitely been a great way to connect. Um, I've personally been blown away seeing how generous my uh, teacher friends have been during this very, very difficult time. And um, we've been able to paint with people all around the world that we never would have gotten an opportunity to paint with. Um, so, you know, last year I was supposed to go back to Madrid and paint with my friends at Chopo in Madrid, and uh, many of them joined me on Sundays here, and so that's nice. My friends in Taiwan, where I would go paint um, every October and haven't been able to join me on Facebook, and so again, having you guys here is definitely a blessing for me and for the teachers that are sharing what they love to do. I know I can speak for them um, so boldly that they feel the same way. Okay, so on the home stretch with those leaves, quite a few of them, aren't there? Because I added it. I added that many leaves. All right, so I'm gonna back out just a little bit. <clears throat> a little bit more. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so look how pretty. Love, love, love the way this is looking. So again, not gonna paint this right now. I wanna show you the words that I did. Um, and again, these are on my Facebook page here. Um, I just printed them off from PicMonkey, which is my photo app that I use. And I'm gonna show you how to um, kind of get this torn edge look. You probably already know, but I'm gonna show you anyway. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take a brush, and get it wet, and I just printed this on computer paper. Now, let me tell you, sometimes inkjet printers will bleed. I have a laser. This one, I printed with an inkjet printer and I went over it and there was no bleeding. You see that? It already has a shadow to this font. So on that one. So if it bleeds a little, it's just gonna give you a shadow, okay? So I'm gonna take my, um, I don't know, like a number 10. I just saw Donna's. We need to support the teachers who have been so generously by buying from them. You're very sweet. Um, and many of you do, and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so I just cut out, um, this is on like half the page, and I have a, a pretty damp brush. And I'm going to pull that water right along the top, right along the bottom, on the sides. And I'll hold it up so you can see. Okay. In fact, I'm going to tear this so I can show you. You could tear it just like this, 
But I love the way it um, it's very thready looking um, and fibrous when you do it with water. So you always wanna hold like where your letters are. That will keep your paper from tearing too close into your letters, okay? So I'm gonna tear right here and tear that off. Now, if you didn't get close enough, you can always come back and add some water. Oh, Pilar, <laughs> I hope I can be in Madrid next year. Not looking like it's gonna happen this year, right? Okay, so, and wet the bottom of that page. And then again, I want my thumb over my words so that I can control how much I tear and you're just going to rip that. Again, I just love the fibrous look that you get along the edge that's different than when you tear it when it's dry, okay? So again, these words are on my page here, Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page. I will, um, by tomorrow, pop in the colors and brushes that I used and the link for the stamp, although I saw in my notifications on my iPad here that several of you have already jumped over there and gotten them. So, um, again, wet brush, lay it down. And these words are separated, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put water right here. Trying not to get too close to the letters. I think too, um, Linda Safranco, a great, you know, a cool way to tear. And actually, I learned this at a scrapbook thing years ago. Because mine always just looked a little stiff. And I loved this lady's kind of fibrous edge. And she showed me what she did. So, something that I've loved to do since. Oops, I just flicked that, went right in my water basin. <laughs> okay. So, make time to stop and smell the roses. Are you guys doing that? I know I have to remind myself often to do that. Slow down just a little bit. I don't smell as many roses as I used to for those that follow, have followed me along my travels the last five years. Um, Every time I would come home, my husband would have flowers waiting for me. And it became kind of comical that when I would come home and thank him for the flowers, he said, well, I was kind of afraid if I didn't get any that your, your followers, your friends on Facebook would be like, what do you mean he didn't get you flowers? <laughs> um, but I just always had the prettiest flowers. So, okay. Last one. And again, you could cut it out. You could have straight lines if you're, you know, you want those straight lines. I just really want this um, fibrous. Let me hold it up to the camera so that you can see. Let me see if I'm holding it right. There we go. So. You can see almost like little threads of the paper. The fiber of the paper has come through a little bit more than tearing it dry on dry. Dry on dry. <laughs> dry edge to dry edge. Okay. And then I did do these words separate. So let's go ahead and wet there and right there. Ooh, that was a nice close up of my thumb there that has not had a recent manicure. Okay, then you kinda wanna just look and see if you need to reshape any. You know, like my roses, 
you know, I have a little too much paper showing. So you can just come back with your brush. And I like to put my finger over the words so that I, um, on a smaller piece like this, so I can kind of control where I'm going. That just kind of helps give me a guideline so that I don't go right down to that word. And then same thing, I don't want as much there. All right. I am with Kathy B on the rose stamp. Would be perfect for memory box boxes. Absolutely agree with you guys. Um, memory boxes are such a fantastic thing to create. Um, so many chapters around the country and world that do that. And I think stamps would make it so much quicker um, and easier. So again, I'm just kind of looking at my words and seeing if I need to adjust any of the edges. We got a little too much here or there. I know that I did on this one. Okay, now to attach my words, I'm using matte medium. You can use decoupage medium, you can use Mod Podge, you can use glue. Um, matte medium is just my preferred method of putting them onto my pages. So, okay, let's put that over there for now. Those are my words. Now let's come in with the background. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little so you can see the whole page. And I might end up zooming in just so that you can see um, a little bit closer, but I'm gonna use, um, you can use um, any turquoise that you love. This is my, um, this is my favorite color um, in DecoArts line of anything, Bahama Blue. And, but any turquoise or aqua color that you, peacock teal, desert turquoise, Indian turquoise, um, mermaid tail, my favorite is the cobalt teal hue. Um, I love the transparency of it. If you're using regular acrylic, you can just add water. And then I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush. Let's find that. My half inch angle brush. So I have a little bit bigger angle brush because I'm in a bigger area. So on the toe only, and like there's moisture in there. Remember, kind of run that through your fingers. If you've got water dripping, you have too much. But you do want moisture in that brush. So on the toe only, I'm gonna pick up that cobalt teal hue, work that in. And actually I am gonna zoom in, so sorry. Make y'all seasick here. Okay, so right up underneath my elements, I wanna come in with that color, and I'm just very kind of fussy, loosely laying in that color. I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm just gonna kind of soften that color out into my background. If I go over the leaves, quite all right. Sometimes I'll just take my finger and wipe it away. Okay, come right back to my paint and get a little bit more water on my brush and just do like a little wash of color in this big area. cobalt teal hue or whatever turquoise color you have. Again, because it's so thin, if I go onto my leaf, it's not gonna make that big of a deal. Okay, that blue on that color green anyway is beautiful. So again, very watercolory. Kind of fill in that area. And then again, a little bit heavier on the toe of that brush when you get close to those items. Just gonna give it a little bit of a shadow, although I'm gonna 
come in and show you how to add some drop shadows because loving those these days. And then again, more of a wash. So what you're gonna get with the wash, like on my finished piece here, is you get areas where that color is a little darker, a little lighter. And again, that's gonna give it just that watercolory effect. And I know we still have an element to add to our leaves. So I have not forgotten about that. Thank you, Linda. I think that, you know, the details too add so much. And um, like I said, I had a um, almost four hour Zoom class with my membership yesterday. <laughs> and um, it was in the evening and my brain was in overdrive and I went to sleep, got up promptly at two o'clock with an idea, wrote it down and could not go back to sleep because, um, you know, when you create and when you're being creative, we tend to want to be more creative. And um, I'm all about details and adding those little touches that take it maybe to another level. Um, and again, always bringing it back to fun, quick, but not quick. Um, I think sometimes when I say quick, people think, oh, just slap it on there and you're done. Because my layering method is anything but quick. Um, but what it's easy, I think. It's simple when you break down the steps. Um, and layering is just a way I love to create. Okay, a little bit heavier under those main elements. Rinse out the brush. And then just get on here and chit chat with y'all. Share what I know. Okay. Very little paint, very, very little paint. Absolutely, Brenda. And with these fluid acrylics, you don't need a lot of paint because they are heavily pigmented. Um, but again, even with the um, Americanas, you, you saw how pretty and look how vibrant those roses are. Um, did not take much paint at all. And another reason I love to layer is because it's easy to take off a little bit of paint. It's harder to take off a lot of paint. So if your brush is heavily loaded with paint and you've got ridges from your strokes, you know, if you mess up and you wanna take it away, you're gonna to have to sand the piece off. Um, or in this case on a journal page, gesso over it. And when you do, you're probably still gonna end up with texture in the background because you have, um, you know, those obvious brush strokes. And I'm all about texture. I love me some texture. But on something like this, very watercolory, loose, light, nothing exact. If you get it too dark somewhere and you want to kind of soften it, maybe just touch it with a little paper towel and it'll lift some of that color for you. All right, let's see where I've missed if I've missed anywhere. I think I want a little bit more up here. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out so you can see that whole page. Again, very loose, very watercolory, so pretty and light, right? Okay, so the, um, sorry, I keep sipping my water because it's very dry here. And um, as I live in Georgia, if you didn't know, and my allergies are kind of kicking in. So um, my throat's a little dry. I wanna show you on the leaves, adding a little bit of that berry cobbler to these leaves. I'm gonna bring my finished piece over so that you can see that. So look at on the, just the little tint of that berry cobbler, just like we did on the rose with the citron green, a little bit of berry cobbler on those leaves. Oh, I just, it's dreamy, love it. So I'm gonna use a small brush, like a number six. And I definitely want to have water in my brush. Get my page so it's on camera there. Again, a little bit of paint, more water to paint. And if I don't see it, I need to pick up a little more. You can just kind of tap that out with your finger. Now, I don't add it on all of them. 
okay? I think sometimes if you add it on all, it looks very cookie cutter. Um, but the majority of them, yes. I especially love it where it's on that lighter side of the leaf, okay? So a little berry cobbler. When you put it on the darker side of the leaf, you're gonna get a much darker look. Let me find a light, a lighter leaf. Let's do this one right down here. When you put it more on that lighter side of the leaf, look how pretty that is, okay? It's pretty on the dark, but I really like it when it hits that light. So moisture in your brush, more water, tiniest touch of paint. Get too much, just touch it with your finger. And I'm not gonna paint it in, but I'm just gonna, since I have it on my brush, I know that my rosebud's there and I can paint it later. Okay. Very cobbler, lots of water. Here, there, not everywhere. Okay, and I'm just going to add it. <laughs> Let's just keep adding it to all of them, even though I said don't add it on all of them. It's too pretty. Okay, so there we have. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Judy. Okay, so we'll let those things dry. Before we add our, um, our words, I want to show you some drop shadows. So we're basically just floating on color. And I know that that sometimes is a bad word in painting. <laughs> um, but I'm going to show you a really easy way. I love especially to do this in my journals to um, get this look that the item is raised and lifted off the page. Okay. So we have like here, up underneath this leaf, especially I've got a nice, rich, dark shading down here. Can you see how that, that float of color came away and to the right of that stem? And again, it lifts it up off the page. So I just absolutely love doing that in my artwork to um, not just float underneath something or float to separate something, but to add those little drop shadows that again lifts those elements. Um, so I'm going to use a flat brush, believe it or not. And I'm going to go right down here. And I'm, I like to use either a number six or a number eight. Um, my go-to color for um, shadows is Payne's Gray, but I often switch it up. You could use a, a darker blue. You could use raw umber. You could use um, a, you know, a, a yellow ochre color. There are so many different colors you can use for a drop shadow. I like to use Payne's Gray, especially the fluid acrylic paints gray, or um, did I grab it in Americana? Let's see. Oh, either of these two colors. Okay, so in Americana, you can do paints gray, again, with water, um, or soft black. Sometimes, to me, lamp black is a little too harsh. So I like to use um, soft black instead, okay? Purple is another great color to float with just to get a nice shadow. Okay, I gotta move my words or I'm gonna mess them up. Come down here so you can see it. My number six brush is quite wet. But every time I start commenting, it stops all the comments rolling up. <laughs> Christina, I know I did that on a live the other day. I commented and then I couldn't see any other, other comments. So I'm not sure. Um, what's going on there. And yes, Jolene, let me answer your question. I always, my people in my membership group will attest to it. Just like when I share my things here on Sunday with you guys on this page, I like to use my heat tool to dry my pages. Um, I'm impatient. I want to move on to the next thing. So this is the Ranger Heat It craft tool. I have an order in for these and we'll have them on my website soon. But in the meantime, if you want to get it now, you can get them at dickblick.com, D-I-C-K-B-L-I-C-K.com. I did not put it on my links. 
Um, but another place and where I got mine, I got mine from Chris Hoy at CoverDistributingCDWood.com. Um, just a fantastic tool and the best thing about it, it's pretty quiet. So when you order it, if you order it from Chris, you know it's for the U.S. But if you order it from Dick Blick, you want to make sure that you don't get the um, whatever the voltage is for U.K. Make sure it's U.S. spec. Okay. So let me put that to the side. Okay. So I have my number six flat wet brush. Where's my paints gray? I'm gonna put out a little bit of Payne's Gray. And wet brush with the tiniest touch of paint. And I'm just gonna make a nice little inky puddle. And good thing to do is test it on the other side of something. So if it's too dark, add a little more water, okay? So that paper, like on this side, it's not gessoed. So you see how it just sucked it right out of my brush. Um, so more water, a little bit of paint, and it's easier to darken these than it is to um, take out heavy, heavy, heavy paint, all right? So what I wanna do is right up underneath my leaf here, I'm gonna float some of that color in, and I might need to bump it up just a little so you guys can see this on camera. Okay, and I'm gonna come away from the stem and add in that little drop shadow right there. A little too much water, so I'm gonna, so here, let me really get in and try and move my hand out of the way so that you can see this as close up as possible. Okay, so laying in that shadow from that stem and then with this leaf I'm going to go right up underneath it but then I'm going to mimic the shape of the tip of that leaf so see how that just raises it and lifts it right up off that paper um, Lorna to answer your question hi UK voltage is 240 thank you Christina yes I figured that's what it was um I have both. This was my original. This is um, from Hobby Lobby, and it's an embossing tool. Okay, I'm so zoomed in. Um, Paper Studio, but listen to it. Oh, I don't have it plugged in. It's quite loud. In fact, I, I don't have it plugged in anymore because I just used my other one. Um, especially on when I'm on live because it's, um, it's not loud. So, okay, so notice how that leaf just lifted right up off that page, right? So I'm gonna float right up underneath here and not every single element needs that drop shadow. You can just float that color right up underneath and notice how I'm patting it. I'm patting it in place. I'm not painting a stroke. Um, again, I think patting it in place is going to give you that softness. Come right away from that stem and get that shadow. Oh, I just love that look. You're very welcome, Lorna. Love, love, love that look. Um, the, the Ranger Heat It tool is, it runs around $28, $29, um, but so quiet, so efficient. Again, look, right up underneath those leaves. And again, not everything has to come away from the element. It can be right up underneath it. It's still going to lift it and raise it from that page. Let's go over to here. But again, where there's an opportunity for you to show there a little more dimension, a little bit more of a lift, take it. And again, that tip. Lift it right up off the page. I'm just going to soften it. 
So I try not to go over it too many times, but like that was a little too dark, so I'll touch it with my finger. <laughs> um, but if you keep going over and over it, basically what happens is you just start lifting the color, especially on paper, um, even though it's been gessoed. Okay, so hopefully you're getting that gist of those shadows up on my roses up here. Again, inky paint right up underneath. To get that shadow on. Now, where I have things like this, I do want to come in with my angle brush. Let me get my um, 3 8 angle. Bye, Jolene. Thanks so much for being here. Um, okay, and I do want to shade up underneath that. So I'm going to use a little bit of berry cobbler on the toe of my brush, touch of burnt sienna on the same corner. I'm just working that in and right up underneath, I'm going to float that color on, okay? Now, if you wanna intensify that a little bit more, you can go to some Payne's Gray. A little berry cobbler on your brush with a little bit of Payne's Gray is gonna darken that color and separate those a little bit more, okay? And then if you need to, you can always come back in and soften that with your mop, okay? But that will that will lift that petal up off of that petal, okay? So again, not gonna do all the cast shadows. I think you get the idea of how that lifts those leaves, those stems, those elements, Oh, just love it. Okay, let's add our words. So I'm going to use the matte medium, and I have, um, I have, I'll show you both the media line matte medium, and then also again in the traditions line they has they have matte medium in a jar now as well. So again, decoart.com, marine slash baker dash baker.com. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. It's my tried and true. You can also use heavy blending, or um, what is it? Heavy gel medium, um, but matte medium is my go-to. So, and I'm gonna be a really bad girl and I'm just gonna use it right out of the jar. Typically I'll say get a palette knife and put it on your palette instead of taking a wet brush. I'm gonna use a dry brush for that reason. Um, and the reason I don't like to take a wet brush and go into my matte medium is because any contaminants from the water is gonna contaminate the product, all right? So I'm going to get my words and they're gonna go right over. In fact, I wanna make that smaller. It's just too big. Take that down in size just a little. And if you don't like, if you don't want the wet paper to show, I will show you a way to get rid of that, okay? So that you can make it appear to be part, more a part of the background. I ordered stands, Becca, I love your teaching, hope to do that. Oh, thank you so much, Margo. I hope you join too. We have so much fun. And again, I'm live on my membership group three to four times a month. Um, and again, have been super blessed with some friends, artist friends, um, because my goal is to bring and share and show um, different things that maybe they're not, or people that they're not familiar with or techniques that they struggle with. So um, it's been a super... Uh, blessing that my friends, my artist friends have said yes. And um, I have some more lined up coming up in the next couple of months that are some of my faves. Okay, 
Take time, make time to stop and smell the roses. Okay, so kind of lay that out. Now, what I'm noticing is this looks a little bit bigger than my original. So again, when I put a list of the colors and brushes that I um, used, I will reduce that font size just a little. Okay, now you're gonna wanna have a water bottle. And this I learned from one of my friends who's gonna be on my group very soon, um, Mark Montano. And he, um, he decoupages and spritzes the back to kind of relax the paper. Had never ever heard of that before, but it works like a charm. So I'm gonna load up my brush and the matte medium dries clear. I'm gonna load up my brush. I'm gonna spritz the back of the page with a little water. And what that's gonna do, see how it's making that paper relaxed? So you get less bubbles and wrinkles when you do that. And I'm going to lay that in place. Hopefully it's straight. I'm sitting so I can't see my page that well. Um, and then you do wanna take that matte medium and go right over it. Okay, again, I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz the back since I'm gonna put both these words on at the same time. Now, notice how my page is curling a little bit. When you do the other side, your page is gonna relax as well. Right now it's curling because I have so much product on it. Um, but if you're working on it and that bothers you, all you have to do is paint the other side with some matte medium or gesso and it will um, lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a cool little trick that I did with my leaves and then also how to make that white paper um, kind of tone down a little bit, all right? Um, and the other thing, I printed this on my inkjet and you see what's happening. It's not bleeding, it's not smearing. If I get a slight little smear, I try not to go over it too many times. I'm just gonna lay that right on. Now, when you get done doing, anytime you decoupage, um, which is basically what we're doing, we're decoupaging paper onto our journal page. Um, if you come back in and you've got an air bubble, all you have to do is take an X-Acto knife and cut it once it's dry. You can stick some of the medium up underneath the paper, press it down in place, okay? So, let's get that on there. And then finally, roses. And I've covered up two of the prettiest leaves, but again, oops, and I didn't spritz that. Again, I like that it relaxes it and all kind of kind of gives that paper a little bit of transparency for a while. All right, so there we have our words, right? So what I did, I have one done, so I can bring it and show you. <laughs> um, and we'll come back to this one when it dries. But one thing um, I wanted to do was extend my leaf, and I can see the design up underneath that paper. Okay, coming a little bit closer. So I don't know if it shows up on camera, but I can see it. So all I did was take a little bit of plantation pine, come back to my leaf, paint that right over that paper. Okay just like that. And then I will um, finish that off. So that's my finished one. So you can come back with the Identa pen and you know the fine tip of the Identa pen and just draw out a leaf so it goes over the paper. What that does is it pushes this back onto your page instead of looking like it's sitting on top because mixed media is all about layers. 
And art journaling, you incorporate a lot of mixed media. You're using a lot of different um, mediums. Same thing down here. See how I put that leaf right back over the paper? I love the way that looks. Again, pushes that in the background, brings the leaf forward, um, adds another layer into your piece. But if I wanna take this white, if I'm not really digging the white paper, all I gotta do is come back with my flat brush, get it wet, pick up just a little bit of the background color, and I can come in and do a little wash of that color right over it. Okay, so that will incorporate that paper. You're still gonna get a little bit of the edge. Um, there's a way to get rid of that. Different journal page, different time. <laughs> um, but putting a wash of that blue right over will help take away that white paper look while still giving you that pretty um, sentiment that's on your page. Again, water in my brush, a little bit of paint, a little wash of color. Oops, too much paint. So again, and you know, I haven't finished these leaves. This is on a page that um, I was doing with my group. And I just, again, did little segments here and there to show how to do the leaves and the roses. But again, you can kind of tone down the look of that paper. And I like that as well. Again, it's just whatever look you're going for. I personally don't mind the white paper, but if you do, that's certainly one way to take it down. Can you use vellum for the letters or will it smear? Um, if you use vellum, I have found you do want to use an inkjet printer. Vellum, um, excuse me, not an inkjet printer, a laser printer. Um, I have used an inkjet on vellum and it will smear, okay? So this is still quite wet. I'm just gonna hit it with the heat tool real quick. And while I'm doing that, I'll look over at the comments, see if I have any questions that I see that I could answer real quick without going too far. Bye, Jackie. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Linda. You got yours, Bonnie, from Chris. Yes, yeah, so again, cdwood.com. You can get this heat tool. I've had mine on order for a little while. I'm hoping they get here soon. Now, once you go over your letters, and again, mine didn't smear, you could always come back in and, um, you know, if they tone down too much with your IdentiPen, with your rigor brush, and just go right over them with paint. With the heat tool, you definitely wanna make sure that you are moving it around. If you stay in one area too long, you run the risk of burning your paper, <laughs> which would not be good. The other thing is you don't wanna stick your hand on the back of that vent. That vent is there for a reason. Um, and it really is one reason, another reason why I love this one. Not that I'm a spokesperson and I'm not getting paid, <laughs> but another reason that I love this Ranger heated tool is because when I hold this one, the uh, embossing, I tend to hold it here. Well, guess where I'm holding it? I'm holding it right over the vent. And um, I have a friend that flames shot out the back end of it because it was overheated. So this one, you have that handle. Okay, so that's nice and dry. And again, it's curling a little bit, so I'm just going to zoom out. Oh, I do wanna show you this. So notice how it's sweating on the back of that page. So oftentimes when I'm drying it, I'll lift it up because it's on a rubber silicone mat and it's just gonna sweat on the back of that page and get wet. So I'm just gonna fold this just a little, very loosely. That's gonna relax my page a bit. When it's in my journal, it'll go completely flat. All right. So now um, I usually use a baby wipe for this, but I'm gonna show you how to use an angle brush. Our last little step to take um, and kind of frame this in a little. So my 
half inch angle brush with Payne's Gray on the toe. Got a little too much water there. And so the toe is facing out and I'm going to get more paint since I have more water in my brush. I just wanna float that color right along that page. And I like to round the corners right over those leaves and everything. Okay, now let me tell you another trick. If my page on the back is already done and here I am working on this, there are two ways you can protect the other side. If it's already finished, you wanna varnish it. And my go-to varnish is uh, the Media Soft Touch Varnish. You can also get it in DuraClear. Um, I do not like gloss. I live in hot, humid Georgia and gloss pages stick together like peanut butter and jelly. So you don't wanna use that. You wanna use um, a matte, a satin even is pushing it, but I like that soft touch varnish. And for many of you I know watching, you felt my journal pages and my journal pages feel like leather because of that um, soft touch varnish. So if you varnish your page and you're doing this side and you get paint on it, you can wipe off almost everything on the other side. Something else, press and seal, saran wrap. You can take some um, painter's tape and put it on the other side. I, I, sometimes I'm worried about that, that it's gonna lift up my piece. So I, I am a little bit more careful and not just slapping the paint on. But I also have come to the understanding when it comes to creating in my art journal that if that paint gets there, it was meant to be there. Um, and one of my biggest tips that I give anybody that journals um, with me is to not tear out a page. You can gesso over it, you can fix anything, you can turn the page and readdress it and come back to it. And if you're short on wall space, it's the perfect thing to be creating on. Now these are a little tricky, so you want to very lightly tap those. It is a perforated page too, so there's a perforation that goes right down that. If you wanted to tear and have your artwork and frame it, you could do it within that perforated edge and you'll have a straight edge on all sides. Okay, so if you wanted to take it out of your art journal And again, that's another thing we do, and I really try to um, inspire my membership to take this outside the journal and paint it on something else, especially if it's a design that you really love. Oftentimes, I'll create in my journal, and those become pattern packets. Those become designs on another surface. Um, but I can kind of work out some kinks and work out and play with color combination and layout on my journal page before I take it to a surface. So let me back out of that, just so you can see that full effect of that shading in. You could um, spritz it a little bit more with, you know, splatter. Y'all know I love splatter. Um, but I just finished mine and left the paper white. Um, didn't add anything to that, didn't splatter anymore. I just liked that soft, touch um, and then I did come back a second time once that dried and really intensified especially in the four corners intensified that shading um, again I just think it frames it it brings your eye in and what I absolutely love and one of the reasons I wanted to share this page with you guys um, is to take something and turn it into something different again putting those elements in place, but then using part of that stamp somewhere else and creating a design um, and a layout off of your ready-made line drawing, which is your stamp. <laughs> okay, so let me come back up here. 
I hope that inspired you guys. I hope you enjoyed um, those techniques and those tips and tricks. And again, my doors open for my Adventures of Art and Art Journaling on Friday. Would love to have you guys join me there. Um, more information throughout the week, especially Friday morning when the doors open. Um, I do have a page on my website that gives you a little bit of information, sandymcteardesigns.com. Um, but one thing I didn't do last time with my membership is it was yearly only, and this time it will be monthly. You can do monthly or yearly, but I have to tell you that yearly, significant, substantial discount when you sign up for the year, okay? So I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for being here with me. Again, this is going to be on my YouTube channel as well um, after today. And don't forget to comment, share, and like to be entered into the drawing. And my next live here, Sunday in the studio with Sandy, I will have those prizes and names of who are the winners. Okay, you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate y'all. Bye.